This resource gives an introduction to the very basic use of MATLAB, so simple calculations and use. So we demonstrate how to use basic MATLAB functionality because an understanding of this is a precursor to the more advanced uses that you're going to need for general engineering problem solving. We're going to focus here on what you might call BODMAS type of operations. Now MATLAB also supports simple algebra and number crunching is far easier than using a hand calculator and hopefully after even this brief video you'll be ready to throw away your calculators whenever you possibly can. So we're going to give a quick overview of MATLAB tools and usage and a live demonstration at the end so you can see how to do these things for yourself. So basic algebra. Key point is that MATLAB will handle any basic BODMAS type of operation. So all you do is type the desired computation and the answer will appear as long as you're strict um, and you write the computation correctly. We'll demonstrate live but here we'll show some typical screen dumps so you can see the idea. So here you'll notice I've put in a typical BODMAS command 3 plus 6 minus 2 times 8 and what do you expect it to do? Well what you expect it to do is first of all do the 2 times 8 because that's the BODMAS rule which gives you 16 and so you're going to end up with 9 minus 16 which is minus 7 and that's what it's done. Here's another example slightly more complicated and you might want to pause the video and look at that yourself and confirm has MATLAB done what you expect. A key point to notice if you want a multiplication you use this symbol here. That symbol there means multiply. What about using variables? One advantage of MATLAB compared to a calculator is the ease with which computations can be allocated to variables and therefore you can save the answers and use them later. So here's an example. You'll see I've put the value 24 into the variable A. I put the value 8 into the variable B and now I've used the values of A and B in this computation. I've said that C is going to be A minus B cubed Oh, sorry, times 3 plus a squared minus b squared and I've put the answer in c and now I've used a, b and c to calculate d. So MATLAB is convenient because it allows you to put answers and computations into variable names. Now the way you do this is you use this notation name equals. So you notice here I said a equals 24, b equals 8. You cannot write 8 equals a. If you do that, you will get an error message. So I should put a there to make it clear. You have to put the variable name on the left hand side. That's the MATLAB syntax. Now the variables are automatically stored in the workspace for reuse. So if you look at the workspace, I'll see this workspace tab here, and you'll see it's stored a, it's stored b, it's stored c, it's stored d. OK, already there. You've entered them and it's saved them. You can also calculate mathematical functions just by typing the names. And if you don't allocate the answer to a variable name, MATLAB will just put the um, variable into ants. So here's an example. I've done sine A. I haven't told MATLAB where to put it, so it's put the answer into ants. I've worked out cos of B and it's put it into ants. I've worked out log 10 of c, let's put it into ants, and here exponential, and let's put it into ants. As a general rule, make sure you put a variable name and it will go where you expect. Now if you want to find out about more functions, here I've shown you sine, cos, log and exponential, what you do is you type help lfun in the command window and it will list all the different functions that MATLAB supports. What about long expressions? It's easy to write long expressions as may arise in problem solving and you'll see that these are far easier to write down and view and edit than on a calculator because you've got a big screen, you've not just got a tiny calculator screen. So here's an example. You'll see the expression that I've put down here is quite a long expression and if you put that on your calculator you'd be struggling to see it and see what was going on. But here I can see the whole expression and MATLAB's calculated it for me. Now, there's another advantage. If you make a mistake 
and you want to correct it, you don't have to retype the whole thing. What you do is use the up arrow on your keyboard and that will recall the command and then you simply edit the bit that you need to edit and run it again. So if you look here, you'll see the only difference between these two is this bit here. Instead of 2x, we've got 2x plus 4 and I achieved that simply by doing the up arrow and then adding a plus 4 and then on we go again. So very, very efficient to deal with long expressions. So being efficient, rather than typing into the command window over and over again, it's far better to save your core commands in a file. Then you have to retype them, they're saved. And what MATLAB does is it provides script files for you to do this. Now in order to get a script file, you just use this window here, you'll see where it says new script. And it will open up a script file. And here's an example of one that's just been opened. Now what you should always do when you've opened up a file is immediately save it somewhere. Where do you want to save it to? So give it a name and specify a folder where you're going to save it and then there's no danger of you losing your work. And note that the default ending for MATLAB files is .m. Don't change this because that's how MATLAB knows it's a MATLAB file because it finishes .m. Now we'll talk about script files much more slowly in resource 5. If you want to open a same file, you simply go to the file tab and open from there. So you'll see you can use this tab here, open, and you select there and find the file and open. And the key point here is what you must not do. Do not open the files from Windows Explorer. Always, always, always open them using this button here. Okay, because that way you will ensure that MATLAB works effectively. And if you do it any other way, you can get some glitches with how MATLAB works. Algebra. MATLAB will also do symbolic algebra. To do this, variables must be defined as symbolic, because the default for a variable is a numeric value. And you'll see to make them symbolic, oops, went the wrong way there, you've got this command here. Sims has that command has defined the variables f, g, and h as symbolic. And you'll see what's happened now is when I write k equals sine f plus g over h, it gives me an expression. It says this is algebra, it's not numbers. I can expand that, and those of you who remember your rules for signs of double angles and things like that, you'll see the expansion is giving you this long expression here. So MATLAB supports lots of key algebraic um, calculations that you might want to do. And you'll notice if you look in the workspace that these variables have all been defined as symbolic variables. They don't have numbers in them, they represent some form of algebra. You can, however, put numbers into symbolic expressions if you want to, and you do that using this command subs, which is short for substitute, i.e. substitute this numerical value into this particular variable. So we're going to do two examples. Let's assume that I had an expression m, which was f squared plus 3f minus 1. Now in maths terminology, if I wrote m brackets 4, that would be interpreted as 4 squared plus 3 times 4 minus 1, because m of s is a function. If you wanted to do this in MATLAB, it's very, very similar. You see I've defined f to be symbolic, I define my function m equals f squared plus 3f minus 1 and then this command where I substitute in the value 4 you use subs. So you say substitute into the function m the value 4 and it will work it out for you and here you see we get the value 27. Now symbolic variables are covered much more slowly in resource 7 because this is just a brief overview. So some live demonstrations then to show you um, some examples of using MATLAB for basic computations. So here's my command window and what I'll do is I will go to some pre-saved commands. So simple algebra, A equals 23 and you'll see if I just copy that across with F9 it just runs it and says there's my variables, there's the values. So I've done all these simple computations, you'll see I've put them in the command window, run them and it's given some answers. And if I want to see what values I've got, if I go to this workspace tab, 
you can see in A is 23, in B is 15, C is 343, and so on. So it's saved all those values for me, just in case I need them later. If I want some long expressions, so here I've defined W to be 3.2, and then I've got this long expression here, G of W. And it's calculated it for me, and you can see it's using quite a bit of the screen. If I want to edit that, I use up arrow, so I've just pressed the up arrow key. You see it's reappeared, and then I can edit it. So I've changed that 2.1 to 2.3, that W squared, I'll put plus 4. Go along that 0.1, make it 0.4. So you can see, very easy to edit, very transparent, and then press return, and it would do the new calculation for me. So dealing with long expressions, MATLAB's very, very efficient. If I like that new command and I want to save it, I can copy it and put it in my file, which you see I've just done here, and then save it in the file. Symbolic variables, so I've defined a variable there, symbolic variable to be z, and then I've generated this function of z, which I've called h, and you see it's written out as a function of z. And if I want to evaluate h at z equals 4, I use this subs h4. And there we see h of z at 4 is 113 over 2. Now if you want to find out what other functions are available, you can see you just type help l fun. So I do that. You see I've just typed help l fun there. And you see it gives me a whole list of different sort of functions that MATLAB will do for you. Lots and lots and lots. Here's all the trigonometric ones. Okay, you go down, here's some exponential ones, here's some complex number ones, and so forth. So, in conclusion, we've demonstrated the effectiveness of MATLAB for carrying out and saving simple algebra and numerical computations. It allows transparency for very long expressions. It allows easy recall of commands for editing. It allows easy definition of saving of variables to memory, which MATLAB denotes the workspace. And I prefer to save regular and validated complicated expressions or sequences of calculations into a script file. So in the long term, I recommend you get in the habit of generating script files because then you save the things that you know work and then just open them to reuse whenever you need them.